Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and in this tutorial, we're gonna be showing you how to get a glitch effect like this with no plugins in under 10 seconds. Okay, so here's the thing. You can actually get this glitch effect we showed with just one click and drag solution. Here's my original clip, and I'm just gonna cut off a quick section for demonstration so my computer doesn't need to work quite as hard. Now in your effects panel, search for digital glitch. It's gonna be a VR effect and that's okay. Just click and drag it onto your footage and voila. With no work, it's already looking so good. I wasn't lying about pulling this off in 10 seconds. The color chromatic aberration and the glitching particles have all been created for us without any work. When Premiere started supporting VR video, a lot of these types of effects slipped under the radar because people thought they couldn't apply them to non-VR footage. Not true. Your computer might end up working pretty hard in some cases with some of these, but if you limit it to just a few frames of glitchiness, you should be absolutely fine no matter your computer. But here's the only problem. If we want it to last any longer than one frame at a time, you can see that it doesn't really look glitchy, and that's because all of these random elements aren't being random. They're staying in exactly the same place. So to fix that, just go down here in Effect Controls to Random Seed. And you can see that if we move around our random seed value, we get a different visual representation of this glitching effect. So if we hit the stopwatch here and enable keyframing for this effect, and then move it forward and set a new value, our effect looks something like this. Awesome, right? But how can you take this effect up to the next level? Well, under the parameters of this effect, we can change up a whole lot of different aspects. For example, we can change the color distortion and make the RGB splitting more prominent. Or distortion complexity to make the glitching more fine and granular, or more big and obvious. There's countless different parameters you can play around with and dial in the exact effect you're looking for. But I'll share with you my personal favorite settings to get the version of this effect that I like the most. Start by unchecking Auto VR Properties. Then, decrease horizontal and vertical field of view to something below 100. I like 80 and 90. Keep everything else the same until the distortion section. Here, change the distortion complexity to 100. Next, under Transform, set Scale X to 85, Scale Y to 80, and Scale Z to 100. Finally, under the sub settings, set sub influence to 100 and raise the sub scaling to your liking, but I like 98 or 99. And this is the version of this effect that I've personally come to like the most, but everyone has their own opinion, so feel free to play around with it and make yours look however you personally like. Another thing you can do is make the impact much greater by adding additional forms of glitching. Offsetting the effect so that it's only happening a couple frames at a time and popping in and out with clean footage is a great way to up the effect of your glitching. But you can also add other visual types of glitches in addition to this one. Like, for example, adding a wave warp effect. Search for the wave warp effect and drag and drop it onto your footage. Now, depending on which order you add these in, you might see this warning sign here saying that the effect requires GPU acceleration. Except, you might already have GPU acceleration enabled. So, what gives? Well, to fix that, you just need to make sure that the final effect impacting your clip is the VR glitch effect. To make sure of that, just go to Effect Controls within that clip and drag the VR effect down to the bottom. This should make the warning banner disappear. If you're still having trouble, another way to get around this would be to have one of the effects impacting the actual clip and another on an adjustment layer over top of it. Now, there's a bunch of ways to use the wave warp effect to glitch up your footage, but one of the most popular is to give it a sort of deinterlaced video line sort of look. Under wave type, select square. But if you're looking to switch it up, you might also like to try sawtooth, noise, and smooth noise. But I'll stick with square for now. Next up, I'm just going to quickly disable the VR glitch effect so we can see exactly what the wave warp effect is doing on its own. Let's go to the wave height and wave width. Wave height will simply determine how dramatically offset these interlacing lines are from each other, while wave width will determine how many visible lines are actually appearing on screen, and therefore how wide they are. You can match my numbers here if you want, but I'd advise playing around to see what looks great for your footage in particular. 
Then you can change up the direction if you want to make it specifically horizontal, vertical, or some variant of diagonal. Great! Now finally, changing the wave speed will influence how fast the movement of these lines will appear on screen. Then you can select pinning all edges to make sure this effect extends all the way to the edge of frame. Then I'm just going to re-enable the VR digital glitch effect so that we can see our finished result. And because we have multiple heavy effects going on at the same time, we're going to need to render out this area to be able to actually see what it looks like in real time. Okay, cool. This effect is looking great. And another awesome part of this effect is how easy it is to use on elements like text or logos with a transparent background. On this text layer, for example, I can simply place an adjustment layer above it and copy over the exact VR glitch effect that we just created and paste it onto your adjustment layer. Now, just by chopping it up in interesting places, I can really make a convincing glitch effect for this piece of text. And what's great about this is if I nest these two elements together and then place that sequence within my larger work, the glitching will only affect my text and not the other elements in my frame. But let's say, for example, that we wanted to turn this into a transition. How do we go about that? Well, we can do that a couple different ways. A really simple way is to have these effects that we've implemented on an adjustment layer over top of the video between these two pieces of footage. And as long as we have keyframing to make sure that things are jittering around a little bit, we can see that the glitching naturally sort of bridges the gap more than just a straight cut. But we can definitely do better than that. We can actually place one layer, one track above the other and overlap them slightly. Then we can do one of two things, or both if you really want to give it a go. The first thing is that you can make one frame cuts on each of them, removing alternating pieces of footage to make the resulting frame hop back and forth between these two pieces of footage. This will help the transition because it's almost as if you're being prepared very subtly for the new piece of footage to be shown. But we can do even more. The other thing that you could try is pretty cool. But to set it up, you'll need to make sure that your second clip in sequence is the one placed a track layer above. Then what you want to do is take your second clip and add a mask. And because the glitching is more or less square rectangular shaped, I'm going to choose a rectangular mask. And drop the feathering down to zero. Now we have just a single patch of the new video being shown, and it almost looks like we're seeing through one piece of footage into the other. But it does all of that while incorporating the glitching effect. Now we have a patch that blends in with all of the glitching to look like it's not just switching from one clip to the other, but actually showing parts of both at the same time. And you can add additional mask layers to make this effect even more prominent. The only thing with this part is that to truly make it look glitchy, you'll need these masks to be radically different each frame. Different placement, different sizing, etc. So to only have them available for one frame at a time, either cut your clips and change up the masking for each of these different sections, or you can keyframe the mask paths for every single frame that you use this. You probably won't need any more than two to six frames for the actual transition. Okay, so now let's take a look at what we've got. I really like this effect. And as long as you have Adobe CC 2018 or newer, you can do all of this with absolutely zero third-party plugins. It's all able to be done natively inside of Premiere Pro. So guys, that might be all that you came for, and if so, no hard feelings. But what I want to do is go over a bunch of different types of glitching effects that you can create, or even add to this particular effect, so that you have a lot of different options to throw out in different situations. For the rest of these, it's going to be a really great idea to simply duplicate your clips so that one is directly on top of the other, and they're both showing the same image. To do that, simply hold Alt or Option, and click and drag to a new layer. If you're having trouble keeping it in exact alignment with your other clip, Hold shift while you're doing this as well, and you'll lock off that position in time. And that'll prevent you from dragging it to the left or right. This first glitch effect that we're going to go over now is pretty simple. All you have to do is drop your opacity, maybe to about 50%, and then make single frame cuts all along your footage where you want the glitch effect to happen. Then make any changes you want to either the scale, or the position, or both. Making these changes noticeably different between frames produces a really cool glitchy, trippy effect. And you can take this up a notch by adding the RGB splitting effect from the other example, but if you don't want the little glitching particles, you can go down to your effects and search for chromatic aberrations. This will also be a VR-based effect. And that's okay. Adding this will create the RGB splitting effect on top of any clips you place it down on. 
nice and easy. You can also take this clip on top and add a crop effect. And then raise the opacity back up to 100%. Here, you really won't see any difference if it's the same size and same position. But when you change the position or scale, you'll get a clear divide in your footage that looks like you're sort of getting image interference. And again, by more or less randomizing how this looks between individual frames, you get a pretty interesting effect. By adding the chromatic aberration effect, you can really make this effect have that traditional glitchy feel. One thing to note is that if you feel like the effect is looking too much like it's trying to act as if you're working in a VR video, for example in this clip where you see the RGB splitting sort of flaring out at the bottom, unchecking auto VR properties and playing around with the vertical and horizontal field of view might help you get rid of that. Another interesting one that you might not have thought through is sort of a digital negative effect that looks something like this. To achieve this look, you can go to your effects and search for cell pattern under generate. With a version of your clip still duplicated on top of itself, drop this onto your top clip and you can play around with it, but I like to use the following settings. Cell pattern crystallize HQ, disperse 0.25, size 30, and then for your top clip as a whole underneath opacity, set blend mode to subtract. And you'll get a look that's sort of like this, but you don't have to use just this. You can paste some of the other glitch effects we created to get something more unique. Like what about adding back in our digital VR glitch effect? What can really help is to have this effect on an adjustment layer like we did earlier on. So we'll actually just copy this adjustment layer itself with the VR glitch effect inside so that it impacts everything that's beneath it. And then we get something that looks like this. It's looking great. But the final touch to make it look even more awesome is to make single frame cuts at the place where you want the effect to happen. Then scale up this top layer and move it around like we did before with the previous effect. And because each of these frames is based on an actual frame that the base footage is showing, it looks like a way more convincing glitch because you actually have the same footage that's taking place but in a distorted way. And by taking out sections of this top layer so that clean video plays during the section, the glitch effect is interrupted and is even more convincing. And with that, our final effect looks something like this. And guys, I hope you're really able to see that there's so many different ways that you can get a glitching effect inside of Premiere Pro, and that your only limitation is your own creativity. But guys, regardless of what you end up using in your next project, I hope I was able to help you generate some ideas on how to pull off some really stellar looking effects, quickly and easily, and with zero third-party plugins. But if after all of that, you're actually wanting to check out a plugin to get some great glitch transitions as a drag and drop solution, we've got a bunch of plugins handcrafted to quickly get you some awesome looking results. My personal favorite is the Corruption Transition Set. And if you're wanting to make your glitches have even more impact, we've got loads of glitch styled sound effects for you to check out. But guys, that's it for me. If you like this video, feel free to like it, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to never miss when we post. Thanks so much for stopping by and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Yeah.